welcome to episode 22 of the Endless Island podcast. I am one of your hosts, Artmat1231, and with me as usual is Arius. Hello, friends. And McCracken Way. Hello, everybody. And a very special guest this week is Assassin M. Hey, guys. It's great to be here. It's great to have you. Uh, today, we're going to talk to M about lots of different things, and then we're going to talk about, uh, have a quick rundown of Gamescom. Lots of different things about that. Then we're going to talk about uh, Ubisoft's new social media site, the Assassin's Creed Council. Then we're going to look at our weekly discussion thread. And then we're going to talk uh, about two very special things. Um, I want to know what you guys did this week, if you did anything interesting. I played two games, both were free on PS Plus, Limbo yeah. and Sound Shapes. Yeah. And uh, Sound Shapes is really long. So I've just been playing it for like 15 minutes every day, and I finished Limbo in two days, and they're both really, really, really good and well worth the price of nothing, and I definitely recommend that everyone checks them out. I definitely recommend Limbo. Um, I've actually played it before, but I'm, I was playing it in view of other people uh, while I was taking the spider part, and hearing their noises of disgust was pretty interesting. But, <laughs> um, yep. I've actually been playing, along with the marathon, um, with AP1, uh, I've been playing God of War Ascension, which just w- became free on PS Plus as well. My PS3 doesn't have enough space for that. I need like 64 gigs. Oh, yeah. Oh, my I God. Have, my my PS3, got... I have Splinter Cell Blacklist, and that's like the only thing I can ever have on it because it's 13 freaking gigs, and I got the 20 gig model from the very beginning of the PS3 yeah. cycle. Oh, bad decision. Yeah, yeah. God of War is like, I think the actual file is like 36 gigs, but for the download, you have to have 80 gigs available. Oh my yeah. god! Because it like I said, it downloads it. Then it, it needs so it needs like the thirty to download it. Then it needs another thirty to install it, and then it deletes the download for some reason. It doesn't uh, download and install at the same time like you would expect. So it actually mm-hmm. the download. Itself, Welcome to the God of War podcast, a weekly <laughs> podcast. <laughs> uh, I just like two hours ago got back from my whirlwind tour of places and stuff. If you've been following me on Twitter, I've been posting random videos every once in a while. But I'm now back in Chicago, finally, thank God. <laughs> um, uh, very happy to be in my own chair and desk. I hear that something interesting happened in uh, Montreal. Yeah, something very interesting happened in Montreal. I got to meet the, the star of the County Down himself, Darby <laughs> McDevitt, and also Gabe Graziani. Uh, those two were excellent to talk to. Um, unfortunately, uh, the interview that we were hoping to do um, didn't get okayed by PR in time. So uh, all we were really able to do was just kind of have a, a chat over coffee, which was still unbelievably fantastic to, you know, just be sitting across from Darby McDevitt and just talk about Assassin's Creed. And that was really, really amazing. So no. uh, thank you to both of them. That was just unbelievably excellent to, to do. Yeah. If you remember, I had one question for you, which you were going to ask. And um, did I end up getting that duet of mine? Um, I actually didn't get a chance to mention the song Star of the County Down because we were talking about a bunch of other things. Um, but next time I see him, and of course I'll just uh, you know, have coffee with him every week now, um, okay. I'll definitely mention that duet that you want to do. Uh, it'll be a four-person thing between uh, Darby and the three of us. Uh, <laughs> so it'll be the Animus Island and Darby McDevitt um, musical thing. <laughs> All right. I think quartet. Quartet, that's the word quartet. I think that we should get started. So, and first of all, we usually ask all of our guests, how did you get into the AC games from the beginning? Well, I was, uh, um, I didn't follow the franchise too much. I just saw one trailer in 2006, and I think it was the All Fair Was Here trailer, and then I saw the, um, I don't know if it has an official name, but it was a CGI trailer where All Fair, it was a very early trailer, and I think it was uh, at E3, so I saw that one too, and then fast forward until about 2008, and I go to a friend's house, and I see, I see him playing the game, and he basically spoils all of it for me. He was playing on PC, but thankfully I had forgotten about that, and then in April 2009, my brother had a friend who played Assassin's Creed, so he lent the game to him, and we started from there, so I basically started in April of 2009 uh, with playing the Assassin's Creed series, and then I finished, I finished uh, the first game in like three weeks, 
and then Assassin's Creed 2 was announced. So that was. Right. was so let's like, take you onto the games. How did you get onto the online community? How did you get onto the forums? Uh, I joined on the forums in September 2009. I don't actually remember exactly how, but I think I was. I probably had had a problem with uh, one of the games, and I wanted to talk to somebody from Ubisoft about it. So I found the forums and I joined. And fun fact, back then I actually thought Ezio was real, and I made a thread about it. And that was a really long time ago. When people keep bringing it up, and it's one of the most embarrassing things to read sometimes. <laughs> so you are a active member and probably most well known for your time on the Ubisoft forums, and uh, well, you have been on other places like the subreddit and Twitter. You have uh, pretty consistently been um, on the forums the entire time, and uh, most of our listeners, as far as I know, are subreddit users. Could you give us a rundown, or could you explain how the UB forums are different from the subreddit? In like, not like a technical way, but more like, how the, how's the community different in the Ubisoft forums than it is from the subreddit? Well, there's generally, the most, the most different thing is the moderation, of course. So, you know, you don't have as much freedom on the Ubisoft forums. But I would say there's advantages and disadvantages to that. I mean, on the Ubisoft forums, List, yeah, you can't really cuss or express yourself as openly as you can on the subreddit. Uh, it really provides for a, I don't know, I don't want to say a tighter community because on the Reddit, when I went there, I, I felt really welcome, so it wasn't really that hard to fit in really quickly. But it just, it just feels that, that whatever you say or whatever opinions you hold on the forums, you won't be really scrutinized openly for it, you know? Like, if uh, if you say that you like Connor, sure, you may get the two or three odd people who are going to tell you that Connor sucks and you're an idiot, but the mods are going to quickly step in and put an end to that. While on the subreddit, there can be... It can be a little more intense than that, which I don't mind. I, I'm the... Mm -hmm. people, sometimes people get scared of me on the forums, so... <laughs> Yeah, it could be a little bit more intense in both directions, people supporting you and people against you um, yeah. on the subreddit. You can't really ever tell um, with this community. Now, uh, more recently, you went to E3 as a member of the Ubisoft Star Player Program. Uh, what was all that about? Could you explain to us what's the Star Player Program and uh, how, how, did, how did E3 go? Well, E3 went amazing and man, I was just... Well, here's how it started. Let's let's take this step by step. I was just sitting on my couch one day, and suddenly a wild email appears, and it's from Justin Kruger, and he tells me that I've been selected to be a member of the Ubisoft Star Player program, and he tells me that I need to fill in the papers he sent me and RSVP as soon as possible. I'm like. What's this? Is this is this real? And then I read the contract, and it says exclusive events, early in-game access, and an all-paid expenses trip to E3. I'm just sitting here. This can't be real. And the the name sounds familiar, but I'm just it's not just it's not clicking yet. So I go around and ask, and I reply to Justin, and and uh, I'm telling him this is. What what is this? And then he asked if I read the uh, the contract and the handbook that he gave me. And I'm like, yeah, I read it. And man, this is wow! Like it took me a while for me to actually accept that this is happening. So in the next couple of weeks, uh, Justin and I kept correspondence about the light times and the schedule and all of that. Uh, um, and they really took care of me, like. There was, I, it was top quality, the hotel, the events, the organization, everything. And they made sure that everyone was treated as a VIP, you know. Um, the Star Player program is basically the most active and the most vocal members of the community. And, you know, when they put everybody's uh, biographies up on uh, the Uplay website, uh... Before, when I saw the email, I was like, yeah, they noticed my importance. I'm really important. But then, when I read who else was coming, I was like, wow, I'm, I'm like a nobody 
<laughs> these guys. Like there's a cosplayer and there is uh, Marcus who uh, who runs Access the Animus. I'm like, wow, what do I do again? I just I just <laughs> talk on the forums. So you know, it, it was a great honor. And apparently, I was uh, I think I was a replacement for Reno the Bouncer because when I went there, they told me that um, his visa couldn't be finished in time. And when he finished it, it was already too late. So it was. They told me that they're going to try to get him to Comic Con and Gamescom, and it was great seeing him in Gamescom. So you know, I, I, yeah. When they told me about Reno, I was like, yeah, all right, that makes a lot more sense than I am. So. <laughs> all right. So at uh, E three, you played Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Um, you're the only one here who's actually played the game itself. Could you uh, tell us? I know that you probably love to talk about your thoughts on the game. Could you tell us what you thought? I played that demo about maybe 12 or 14 times, man. It was Lucky the developers the, Yeah. <laughs> the developers who were standing there were like, oh, it's you again. Hi. <laughs> uh, so, you know, uh, the first time I tried it, uh, I told the developers, hey, don't worry about me. I know my stuff. And then from that point, every time I did something wrong, they got sassy with me. And they're like, oh, don't you know what you're doing? I'm like, all right, I regret saying that now. <laughs> Um, uh, what? Now, uh, I was just going to move on to the next question. Are you, uh, do you want to finish talking about Syndicate real quick? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, my impressions before playing the game were pretty negative. Uh, I actually thought that this might be the first Assassin's Creed game that I buy like a little later than usual. Because with Unity, I bought it a little bit after release, and then I returned it because of the uh, intrusive online components. And then I bought it again when everything was fixed. Uh, so with Syndicate, I didn't have a lot of hope. And watching the combat and animations, and then the trailer didn't really build any hype in me. But then when I actually played the game, man, everybody who was like, the yeah, animations look clunky, I keep telling them, it plays differently, trust me. Even when, when I tried it for the first time, it did feel clunky, but when I got used to it, it was, it was just... As smooth as butter, so. All right, that sounds great. Now, uh, next question. We're going to some community questions now from uh, Twitter and uh, Skype and things like that that I got. Uh, Pixel, a well-known subreddit user, would like to know how friendly and active is the community on the Ubisoft forums? Well, it depends on what kind of opinions you hold. Uh, <laughs> generally... Generally, a lot, everybody there is the most vocal members are really friendly, and they're not gonna they're not gonna insult you or anything right away. Uh, you can just come in and say anything you want, and nobody's gonna everybody's gonna reply to you in a friendly manner and a polite manner. That's probably because of the moderation, but you know, I like to think that these are actually decent people without the moderation. So mm -hmm. it's it's really friendly in general, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, now this question is a little interesting. Um, Fred, who is a well-known uh, subreddit user again and is also a uh, subreddit mod, um, would like to know why are the UB forums not as cool as our Assassin's Creed? Shots fired. <laughs> the forums are the coolest. Oh shit! Fire That's returned. <laughs> um. And Fred also asks, um, I'm probably going to have to like translate this, but he asks, why can you not swear you cunts? So I guess he's asking, why isn't swearing Damn allowed in Ubisoft forums, even though it's a forum for discussion about the games where you murder people? And people swear. And people swear a lot. It's because kids view these forms and you know you can't have kids reading uh, cunt or fuck or any other stuff but you can hear it on the streets so that's fine but you can't hear it on the phone yeah okay um but that kids forums are a safe podcast. place yeah uh unlike nah. this podcast yeah exactly <laughs> yeah like um so pixel would like to know how interactive is the forums with lead ub peeps so i guess he's asking how uh Inter uh, how often like Ubisoft developers and things like that are on the forums? Because uh, from my understanding, they're on the forums a bit more than they are on the subreddit. Would that be true? 
Actually, no. I think well, I think they view the forums more than they do the subreddit, but they interact more on the subreddit than they do on the forums. I mean, I saw Escoblades and uh, Gabe commenting quite a few times on some of the threads on the subreddit, but on the forums, they, especially Gabe, uh, he rarely posts on anything on the forums, which is understandable, you know. Yeah. So, but they they view the forums a lot. I would I would think that they view the forums a lot more than they do the subreddit. Uh, on Twitter, the cliffhangers would like to know which AC game had the best combat, stealth, and parkour. It's okay if you choose a different game for each aspect. Okay, so. Combat, stealth, and parkour. For parkour, I would say, actually, now, Syndicate, after playing it, I think oh. this would be the best game in terms of parkour, because in uh, Unity, the parkour, they had, they had the right idea in bringing back, uh, you know, manual control versus the uh, automatic controls of uh, Assassin's Creed 3 and Assassin's Creed 4. Uh, but it was a bit clunky. Everything about Unity was clunky. The cover system, the parkour, the running, the walking. And with some new animations and some streamlining, the parkour in Syndicate has gotten a lot better, I think. And it handles, and it handles a lot better than Unity. And Jacob feels a lot heavier. So in parkour, I would say Syndicate. In combat, I would say Assassin's Creed 1, because... No game so far has managed to introduce the balance that this one has. Even Unity. Unity doesn't have the combo kill from Assassin's Creed 1, you know. In uh, Unity, you're only... Yeah, sure, the system forces you more into stealth and escape, but in Assassin's Creed 1, it did force you to, like, escape the fight, but it was still fun when you fought. Unity's combat is not fun. Meanwhile, while uh, Assassin's Creed Combat uh, is a lot of fun if when you master it, you know. Um, best stealth would probably be with the stealth one. It's a lot harder to say because it also has to do with game design. Like Assassin's Creed Three has great stealth mechanics. It has the uh, stalking zones. It has uh, moving hiding spots. Uh, but the implementation wasn't exactly great because of the level design philosophy that they adopted in Assassin's Creed 3. So I would say that the best still is Assassin's Creed uh, Unity, and that carries over to Assassin's Creed Syndicate. So yeah, I would say that this one has the best still, followed by Assassin's Creed 4, or maybe in the same category as Assassin's Creed 4, because the implementation of, uh, in Assassin's Creed 4 was great. Assassin's Creed 4 was basically Assassin's Creed 3, but better implemented in the missions and levels, so, yeah. Alright. Uh, Talking Sandwich on Twitter would like to know how you became so dank. What does dank mean? Um, <laughs> dank is... What does dank mean? Dank is... is dank memes. Dank is, like, cool. For any more descriptive of a uh, definition, you're probably going to have to ask the man himself. But let's just mm -hmm. go with it means cool. Cool. Wow. Okay, well, then I have cool classes at from 12 a.m. to 2 p.m. And you can call me at any number and I'll teach you how to be cool. Alright. <laughs> Wait, Sounds is like cool an insult pretty rare or to me. is it like... Cool is not an insult. Okay, well, I'm just trying to... Make sure because if he's asking why I'm so cold, and uh, I would say the world has made me this way. No, 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 <laughs> that's not what he's trying to say. He's not trying to say yeah. that. Don't worry, yeah. you're. Uh, I was like, I think we've had three people who we've asked that question to, and you are now the second one who is not done with that. Means. Yeah, <laughs> there's been a few YouTube comments that don't know what it means either. We're in a pretty narrow circle. It's a good group to be in. This past week we had Gamescom, one of the largest gaming conventions of the year, and we got two new trailers out of it and quite a bit new info. Uh, first, we saw the Assassin's Creed Syndicate Twin Assassins, Jacob and Evie Fry trailer. Which uh, is awesome! Yes, most people mm. have agreed that it is one of the most uh, awesome trailers we've gotten out of the entire franchise, let alone yep. and during yep. Syndicate's yeah. marketing cycle. 
and a lot of people have said that it probably should have been the E3 yeah. trailer. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, they always like to do their cinematic trailers, but yeah. Mm. Um, so this one actually shows both assassins pretty equally and gives us an idea of both of their motivations and also shows some epic uh, different moments. We see some different outfits for both characters. It, um, it's... Uh, now, uh, we're not going to go near it, but it's definitely a very equal trailer uh, in terms of marketing uh, compared to a lot of them we've seen. And I think that it definitely gives us quite a bit of new info. We know that uh, Eevee is getting some different outfits as well. I know that um, a lot of people, of course, thought that originally because uh, we know that she has customization of her own. But it was cool to, for, uh, to see some of the first ones. Um, and we also see some uh, cool train jumping action, and we saw the first glimpse of the... Uh, Train HQ, Assassin Train HQ. Mm-hmm. And also Jacob's in a burning building for some reason. Oh, yeah. Anyone have like any idea what that was about? Some people have um, said, like, the Royal uh, Theater and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't I think, I think there's... That was about the usual burning building. <laughs> there's always one of those sequences. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure there actually has been a burning building sequence and everything since, like, burning, AC2. I think we've talked about burning. that in the, in the podcast before as well. Yeah. I think we talked about like the the running away through fire sequences. Yeah, but anyway, um, this trailer, uh, I really like the way the voiceover is handled. It's not you know one person gives a bunch of exposition, the other person gives. It's very much back and forth, which um, I like to see that it's kind of like they're both of a similar mind and that they're kind of saying similar ish things and kind of like talking together as opposed to separate. So. The one thing I liked at the very end was how E.B. says for my brother, Jacob says for my sister, and then actually got that backwards. And then Jacob says for London, and E.B. says for family, and then boom, logo. Uh, I really like how it went back and forth like that. I thought that was neat and clever, and how it shows that Jacob uh, and E.B. both care about each other, but also Jacob's like, London! And E.B.'s like, eh, the shroud. So, (laughs) you know. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm, I'm also liking... um, I don't know the trailer gives you a lot of good vistas to see. Yes, um, someone took a bunch of screenshots and it's, yeah, it's really yeah, cool. they were really great. Um, I also like one thing that we haven't seen in Assassin's Creed games because they've taken place, you know, prior to eighteen hundreds. We haven't seen many moving pieces of scenery, I guess, except for boats. But like the boats are one huge thing that moves around but doesn't have moving parts. And I'm seeing in this trailer like see machines with moving parts in them just in the environment which I think is kind of cool mm. um, next up we had the Assassin's Creed Syndicate official EV Fry gameplay which was um, very interesting people are very have mixed reactions about this um, it was great to see some more to see the uh, black box mission style yeah. back and more complex uh, and um more detailed and more thought out than it was in Unity. It kind of seemed like a, uh, kind of like an afterthought in Unity, or at least it wasn't fully developed into the idea that it could be, while here it seems like they've definitely improved upon that quite a bit. Um, also in this, in this gameplay we also see uh, some more of the iconic rope launcher. Um, it is iconic! I mean, like, that's, like, the gear piece for yeah. AC Syndicate is the rope launcher. So I think, I mean, yeah, it's fun to make fun of them for that. But I would say it's pretty iconic. I mean, it may not be, like, iconic for Assassin's Creed, but it's going to be yeah. a large thing that defines this particular game compared to yeah. others. Like, I mean, yeah, you could... Said, like, he said the I mean, Assassin's I- iconic, and so that made it seem like it's... When you think of the yeah. Assassin's as an organization, you think of the rope launcher when everyone thinks of the hood or the white. Or the hidden blade. Or the hidden blade. It's uh, like basically anyway, anything other than this. Continuing, you were saying I've after that? Wording semantics, but yeah. Um, uh, then okay. we also see some things. We see uh, Black Moss missions. We see some stealth action, which doesn't mm-hmm. look too much more complicated than uh, Unity's. But it looks a lot smoother than Unity's, though. Yep. Yeah, I can see yeah. that. Except uh, until we get to this one part of the demo where everyone either rejoiced. In uh, Glee, or they uh, on, most people hated screamed it. and ripped their larynx out, um, <laughs> and that was when Evie went invisible. 
and joined the Fantastic Four and defeated Doctor Doom and uh, got horrible... Uh, hey, no, sorry, I haven't seen that Kratos. movie yet. I'm not going to see the movie. With <laughs> Neither was I. <laughs> um, apparently, Syndicate demo had a cameo in it, but... Um, yes, fun fact. I feel like I'm on that topic. But anyway, the invisibility... Power, like, I, 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 it doesn't... I mean, they, they've said, like, you know... The, the translucent effect is just a representation of her being hidden, but the power itself is definitely a stretch, like, oh, she can stand in the middle of an open street in daylight and not be seen as long as she stands still. Um, and so the power, like, the story-wise, it's definitely a stretch. It's definitely overpowered as well. Mm-hmm. I mean... And especially since it's an optional skill, which means... Yeah, we it's should a late-game upgrade. Which means we should be able to do the missions without it. It means that it definitely seems way more overpowered mm-hmm. than basically anything else. Yeah. I mean... I think like that's sort of there's a crutch. If, yeah. If you really I think want I'm going it, to... you can spend those unused sync points on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think I'm going to reserve judgment on it until I actually play the game for the most part. Um, like, if it was more restricted to say, like, if you stood in darkness and you could become visible, that would make more sense. And it would be like, it is know, restricted to stealth mode, though. That yeah, is something. But, yeah, but that's just pushing I mean, X once. If they just if they restricted it to darkness, then you'd have at least like Ares is desired. Which is what I want all along. Splinter Cell light and darkness mode, please Ubisoft. <laughs> at least have a light version of that. Um, but the fact that it can be used, I don't know, just like. Some of the applications for it are definitely a, a huge stretch and very overpowered and ridiculous. And we also saw, uh, in relation to this and the whole stealth thing, is that we saw uh, hints of the new uh, control scheme, which I'm surprised how different it is from Unity, since gameplay-wise it's pretty much identical. I thought it was going to be like uh, three to four, where basically most of the controls were exactly the same, except maybe uh, yeah. elaborated a little bit. So in here, and um, I'll be using PS4 controls for simplicity, but in Unity... Uh, stealth mode was L2. In Syndicate, it's just pushing X. In uh, Unity, aiming and shooting something was L1 and R1. And in Syndicate, it's just triangle. Yeah. I don't know that I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know that I like stealth mode being mapped to X because I like having camera control. Mm. And that kind of takes up a, a thumb. If you're pressing X the whole time, mm, yeah. is it a holder? Is it a toggle? I think you can do both. Probably, I think they'll let you mm. toggle it. Probably, um, but I know I, I really can... liked. I got I got more. I liked Unity's stealth system a bit more. Like on my second playthrough, when I was holding it rather than toggling it, because then I wouldn't have to worry about whether I'm remembering whether I'm in stealth mode or not. I would always pull it to be in stealth mode. Um, if I can jump back to the chameleon mode thing, the reason that I like it is. Kind of suspending the whole, like, oh, she's turning invisible thing. In, strictly from yeah. a gameplay perspective, I like it because it really differentiates Jacob and Evie's stealth gameplay. And it, uh, I think someone said that it would probably make sense that Jacob has much more health than Evie does for combat. But in terms of how they would play differently in stealth, with Evie, if you can just kind of go invisible and hide in, in plain sight, literally... Um, just in you know the middle of a mission, it really changes the way you can play, and it does make the characters feel very different. So if there are things you can do with Evie that you just straight up cannot do with Jacob, so that's part of why I like it. But um, yeah, I think with I think- regard to the the justification of it, uh, I think that they say it's you know she's controlling her breathing and kind of getting you know low to the ground and whatever. But McCracken, way to your point, what I would really like to see, and Ubisoft, if you're listening. Um, and you probably are, uh, is if it only works during nighttime, that would make a lot more sense. Because, you know, re- regardless of whether you're in shadow or illuminated, whatever. But at nighttime, it would be more logical that you can kind of, you know, control your breathing and kind of sneak down and blend in with the darkness if you're wearing dark outfits like you do. But uh, also, it would kind of make an excuse to plan your missions accordingly. So you might want to, to, you know, wait around until it gets dark so you can do a mission and be able to use your, you know, invisibility more, you know, effectively. So that could be cool, and it brings back some AC1 things, but obviously there's, you know, no plans in that yeah. right now. But that was what I would like to see ideally from this. I think, um, I think from a gameplay progression standpoint, it kind of makes sense. Um, like, because it is a late game ability. 
Um, and it, I mean, it is OP, but there are there's a there is a style of game that you know as you get to the end of the game, you get progressively overpowered abilities, um, and you just can wreck shop for the last you know like quarter of the game. Unity. Um, but so I'd expect Jacob to have some overpowered combat ability, maybe, which I think would be interesting. But yeah, like uh, one problem- thing that we've been doing a lot is comparing Syndicate to Tyranny King Washington because of uh, the rope launcher being the eagle ability, now uh, Chameleon being the wolf ability, a lot of people think that Jacob's going to have a bear ability next. Yeah. Um, and I think, like, from a gameplay point, it makes somewhat sense, but the problem with that is that Assassin's Creed, because it's somewhat, like, historical realism, when you introduce something weird like that, it... it because it's it's so focused on the the realism part, it can be out of place with the rest with like the narrative um, and with the the theme. It's, it feels thematically dissonant, I guess. And mm. um, what's your take? My take? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I can see it from both sides. I can see it from the side that says it breaks immersion, and I can see it from the side that says. Uh, it makes it makes a case for both of them being unique, um, and I can definitely see the comparison to Tyranny of King Washington being a kind of more realistic way of portraying yeah. these abilities. Uh, for me, if it's optional, then it's fine because mm-hmm. when it's optional, I can just use it however I want in any context I make up in my mind. You know, like uh, I could get it for Eevee, but then I would say, oh, I won't use it unless I'm wearing something dark and I'm at night or there are shadows, you know? Mm-hmm. So, so as long as it's optional, I'm fine with it. I, I don't have yeah. any problem with it. And I think that um, a lot of how much people enjoy these abilities will depend on how much, like, they hold the concept of immersion as their god. Like, um, you know, if you look at it as like, ooh, this is a fun gameplay piece, and you can probably play through the game with it on all the time and just have fun. Um, and I guess that's the thing. is like fun gameplay versus deep thematic consistent narrative. Um, and for some people, one is more important. For some people, the other is more important. And that's not their position is wrong either. So um, I think we'll see a, probably a community split on that as well. Yeah. Um, we can't really know how it's going to work or anything like that until the game comes out because marketing always kind of sways it a little bit. Uh, maybe they thought that the community believe would be cool. Um, everyone thought it would be cool and so they showed us with a little emphasis on it even though it doesn't have that much emphasis on the game. Uh, we can't really know until yeah. the release. And I mean, they say late game. The question is how late is that in the game, I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. Because um, it could be just like a really overpowered, like, you know, mm-hmm. end game nuke, like... You use it well, like in, in Unity, use. there were some things that Arnold couldn't unlock until even after Sequence 9. Yeah, which was pretty late in the game. Um, yeah. Though some of them were, like, essential for exploring the open world. Uh, so I'm confident this won't be too much yeah. of, a, of a crutch for, for Eevee. Mm-hmm. I thought that a better way to uh, handle it so that she was better at stealth. Instead of making her the Invisible Woman, they could have just made, like, the guards have a longer detection um, meter. I mean... But that's things that people, that players won't instantly notice. And I think maybe subconsciously it'll click. But like something tangible you can point to that says like Eevee is better at stealth because this, you know, specific skill, ability, whatever. It's something very, very visceral that you can say this is why Eevee is better at stealth. The throwing knives illustrate that though. You don't need to go, she goes invisible. Well, throwing knives too. But I mean, I think yeah, it, there are many things knives. here. But fair enough. It's, it's, throwing knives are not like a unique talent. She's just better at them than Jacob is. Yeah, yeah exactly, um, much better. She gets uh, one like, kill, uh, one shot, one kill instead of... That headshot. Yeah, exactly, instead of Jacob having to shoot him like three times to kill him. At least it's not a, hey, Eevee has a seducer guard ability, so at least it's not <laughs> bad. Um, I was, Another yeah. thing that Eevee has is what I'm going to be calling the Voltaire bomb from now on, thanks to IGN. <laughs> um, yeah. To, the bomb? To, the uh, Voltaire bomb. As in, like, you throw it, and it explodes into a bunch of uh, French uh, poets. God damn it, IGN. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so basically it works exactly the same as the stun bomb. 
in ACU from what we've seen. Uh, I think with it's lethal, lethal, actually. But it's a little bit more. I think it is on uh, in stealth season with the, uh, in stealth situations. It's lethal. Oh yeah, but in combat. But in combat, probably... it works the exact same as the stun bomb. Um, and that's also received a bit of a mixed reaction since most people think it will be provided by our inventor of this game. Um, mm -hmm. And it's a bit uh, more fantastical, a bit more steampunk than uh, other things we've seen. Uh, so uh, it deservedly so. It's also received a bit of a mixed reaction. Yeah. I think it's more acceptable than... Going fucking invisible? Yeah, or even sort of the rope launcher. Because I think... Um, I mean, I'm... Admittedly, I'm not, I, I'm not super into chemistry or anything, but um, I would think that there's a relatively simple way you could create a, a thrown, like, electric mm -hmm. discharge just using, like, um, a battery, but... Yeah. It's I, like a Molotov cocktail, but with lightning. <laughs> I don't personally have an issue with this, not nearly as much as yeah. the whole going invisible thing. Um, but I think it would be I a lot seems, more central for gameplay as well. I think it seems a bit fantastical, but I think that this is something that they can probably easily explain away with the story. Like with our inventor yeah. um, character, yeah. he could probably just make it up. Maybe he saw it in a piece of Eden or something like that. Meanwhile, Evie going invisible, unless it uses a piece of Eden or something like that. They're, they're not even going to acknowledge it. I don't, I don't think, think they're going to acknowledge it in any way. Um, so that, that's, they're quite different. And so I'm actually fine with the lightning powers mm -hmm. um, as a whole. I suspect yeah. the story justification for Chameleon Mode will be in the little two-sentence blurb in the upgrade screen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that sounds about right, actually. I mean, honestly, that's probably what's going to be. Mm -hmm. And I don't think there's really much wrong with that. <laughs> yeah, and probably just be like, Evie controls her breathing. Like we heard in the trailers. Ah, now, one last thing that we got from Gamescom was a Twitter Q&A with game director Scott Phillips. And that was something. That was disappointing. <laughs> it, it, it happened, and he tried, but it was fairly underwhelming. I asked maybe 15 questions, and he answered a total of 10, and out of those, two were mine. And he yeah. chose the two least interesting, least unique questions that I had. I well, that sounds like your fault, after man. <laughs> hey, I didn't expect kidding, him... I kidding. expected him... Uh, like, I, I, I actually thought about that. People have said that as well. I thought that maybe he would answer, like... Five of my questions, because in the past I've answered up 20, 30 questions, but I didn't expect him to only answer two boring ones. I asked, how awesome is it working with Jeffrey yeah. Yotalem? I didn't that want to no, actually answer that. Yeah, that's no bearing on like the quality of the actual game or anything. It's just like, uh, okay. He admires well, Jeffrey just... Yotalem. Great. I can talk to Jeffrey Yotalem about how awesome he is. I don't need to know from game director Scott Phillips how awesome Jeffrey yeah. Yotalem is. Let's just I take a second have... to appreciate how wonderful Ash was in his Twitter Q and A's. He did like four of those, and they were all brilliant. Yeah. So Ash, if you're somewhere listening, you're the greatest AC game director when it came to Twitter Q and A's. Yeah. This. Hey, he yep. didn't answer. Uh, Scott Phillips didn't answer anything new. He didn't answer anything interesting. <laughs> he mm. gave us the uh, marketing PR bullcrap. It's like, I'm yeah. excited for this. I can't wait till you play it. And it wasn't like I don't think he understands that. The people who are asking questions on Twitter Q and A's are not the same people who will see your GameSpot article or your trailer or your TV ad. These are the people that actually care about the game. And yeah, I mean they'll see them, but they won't. That won't be the only thing they see of the game. Exactly. Like you're talking to people. If they follow Assassin's Creed on Twitter, and are willing to ask you, the game director, a question, I can bet my bottom dollar that they've actually seen every single trailer so far. And read every single article. Like, not just some random guy off the street is going to be following AC on Twitter and ask a meaningful question. I don't, why, I don't understand yeah. why Scott is going to give us these just boring and generic answers. So, Scott, if you're listening, we award you the Animus Island Gold Star of Participation, and hopefully you can improve next time. We believe in you. We should send him a sticker. <laughs> <laughs> just mail him a single sticker. Yeah. No, I just hope he doesn't come back. Maybe. Uh... And if he does well next time, we'll give him a cookie. Oh yeah. Um. Uh, maybe Mac can host the next Twitter Q and A. That'd, yeah. That'd be a bit better. I feel like he would uh, host a really good Twitter Q and A. Yeah. He's good. Much nicer he tells guy. it like it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And maybe Mac, if you're listening, you're fantastic. Maybe do the Q and A somewhere other than Twitter because, like. 
unless they're really, really good yeah. with words, you're not going to fit a meaningful answer into 140 characters. You could mm -hmm. do a Reddit Q and A. Isn't that isn't it one? Or thing an AMA. An AMA. That's what we call them. Wasn't um, there one yesterday? An AC Syndicate one. The what? there was there's there's some people uh, I think with our games not our gaming our games is better than our. Oh games. yeah, I saw that. Um, they're 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 RTX and there's somebody there who they're going to talk yeah, to today. Yeah. I don't know when exactly that's taking place. Um, it was um, Mr. 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 Stone, Mr. That guy on Twitter. I don't know his name actually. He doesn't have his actual name anywhere, so I don't yeah. know what's <laughs> on. But he's uh, BFS with Gabe. And that's all I know. Mm -hmm. This week, Ubisoft released a new uh, social networking Assassin's Creed focused site called Assassin's Creed Council. It has had incredibly mixed reviews, um, and, by inc uh, and by mixed, I mean overwhelmingly negative. Um, <laughs> Trending lower. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's very interesting. I have some things to say about this um, because. It's, yeah, it's a, it's a very complicated situation, and it's a, a brand new site, a lot of people have lots of concerns. Um, it's definitely not the best site I've ever seen, um, but it's, it's certainly something. Um, Connor, I know that you've taken a look around uh, a bit uh, on it, so what do, you, what do you think about it? Yeah, um, I'm, uh, I mean, part of it's probably that it's, it's styled more after, like, Pinterest than anywhere that I think uh, oh. is a good discussion. <laughs> you just um, reminded me, actually. I'll just describe the site first real quick before we get into yeah. criticizing it. Yeah. Um, Assassin's Creed Council is a new site from Ubisoft. Basically, it's, a, uh, it's made for content creation, and it's basically like Reddit and Tumblr had a baby, and that baby had Down Syndrome. It's, um, Whoa! Whoa! It's whoa. <laughs> it's not nice. It's, um, it's. I think that's a pretty good score. Um, it's a bunch of modular posts, like on a page, scrolling down. It's supposed. That to is be... something that is much nicer to say. Thank you, Connor. What are you telling me? That you don't look at this and think, "Oh my God, does this have Down syndrome?" No. Uh, I mean, initially, it's like awful. it looks nice. It, it's, it does. It's Visually, it is this, a very aesthetically uh, pleasing website. This was one of the main things that people had against it. Was that while well, Reddit, for example puts function way over form in many ways. Yeah. This puts form way over function, um, leading yeah. to it being a bit of a mess to use. It really is. Um, I mean, right now there's like 1,300 people on it, I want to say, um, most of whom are probably just there to see and look at stuff. And then I think there's probably about two or three people who are actually posting things. Um, so, and because it's early days and because of this thing, there's a lot of posting just like, you know, if you've been to like Reddit, the R Assassin's Creed, or searched Assassin's Creed in YouTube at any point, you've probably seen most of the stuff that's on there by now. Um, it's just, mm. functionally as well, it's not that great. Um, I know that after you have some things to say about the comments, but also just like from my limited experience, like their servers for their all their websites to do with Uplay and stuff are also kind of wonky. So it's like if you want to, you know, because this is a social media thing, you want to put out like a nice profile picture, you know, maybe you want to make your name all cool or whatever. It's probably not going to load when you hit the edit profile button. <laughs> yeah. So I I I want to like it. I want to like most things that I see. Um, the the biggest problem I see is that although uh, aesthetically it looks very nice, um, functionally aftermath. We'll get into this a little bit later. In terms of content, uh, McCracken way, like you said, it's most of the stuff that you could find uh, on uh, Reddit or YouTube or even some things in the UB forums. And M, you could back me up on this uh, later after I finish. Um, yeah, I'm gonna start but, Assassin's Creed on YouTube and see how. But I think on. the main problem is. It's it's a content problem, which is why would someone who um, who uses the subreddit or just YouTube or the forum switch to this? And maybe another angle of that is why would someone who comes into the Assassin's Creed community and has the option of forums, YouTube, 
Reddit, and the council, why would they opt for the council? And right now, I can't think of an especially convincing reason. Um, but obviously, it's a very new website, and we can't really judge it too harshly because it just exists, and there really isn't a community around it yet besides those yeah. three guys. But my main problem is um, there are no real leading community members in it yet, and it really hasn't been built up properly enough for us mm-hmm. to actually see how it works. Um, and then the the reason to switch is I haven't really seen okay. that yet. So yeah, those so, are my thoughts. Yeah. I had a lot of issues with this in the first day. I like when when I see the hub first posted on the subreddit, I just looked at it and thought this is really stupid, and I turned it off. And uh, then when I see officially announced it, I had a bit more of a look around and I went, this is really fucking stupid, and I turned it off angrily, and. Um, <laughs> And I actually, uh, I don't usually like to bitch about things just to bitch about them. Um, if there's some way I can fix them, I try to. Uh, like with Assassin's Creed, um, usually give feedback before bitching about it. Uh, and so I asked on Twitter, because there's nowhere on the site to offer feedback or get in contact with the people who run it. And so at first, I didn't even know that Ubisoft had this. This doesn't even like, the only link to Ubisoft is Uplay. Um, other than the Assassin's Creed logos everywhere. So I actually asked on Twitter if I could talk to someone about this, um, maybe even interview them for the podcast, and um, that didn't end up happening because of the nature of the questions I had. Um, (laughs) I decided that probably wouldn't be good. But I talked to Gabe about it over email for uh, maybe like a few hours, and he basically cleared up basically all of my concerns about it, and I definitely believe it's in good hands. Um... These guys care about the community and they uh, they know the community quite well, I think. And I uh, definitely think that depending where they want to go with this, because it is, as you said, Connor, it's early days. Um, mm-hmm. uh, depending where they want to go with this, they could either make it a really great site, an integral part of the Assassin's Creed community, or it could just be some place where people go to rip off each other's content to get points. Now, and then it'll peter out after a couple of years. Yeah, and then it'll peter out maybe even after six months. Um, I even had a talk to Gabe about, uh, a lot of people are like, will this go the same way as the Watch, Project Legacy, and Initiates? Um, and I had talked to him a bit about, a bit about how, where, where, why they went away. Um, and it was a bit of a different reason than this, and he definitely sees this, this as being a more of a long-term thing. And even the council tour, it says, you know, each year... Um, and I'll get to that in a second. Uh, so I definitely see this being around longer. And especially if they can get the, uh, the users to come, I can definitely see this being around a bit longer. Um, now, the way the site works is... Now, this is probably my biggest issue with it. Other than the typos everywhere, because this was made... And there are many. <laughs> this was made in the Paris office, okay? And they then ported it over into English and they did a bad job because <laughs> there are a lot of typos, a lot of places. I've actually, like, when you hover over your profile, it says profile. There's no E, um, except there's actually three options. And it says, like, profile, view profile, log out, edit profile. And <laughs> I've actually just started calling it my profile subconsciously <laughs> because I read that every single time I click it. Um, and on the Assassin's Council, there's things like votings up and down. So the way the site works is that you make a post, you um, leave your content there, uh, whether it be links to YouTube or uh, fan art or something like that. Um, that's the way it's supposed to work, at least. And basically, when it's good quality content, people vote it up, and it will make it to the front of the hot new page, the uh, hot now page. And if your content is bloody fucking shit, or no one wants to see it, it will be downvoted, and no one will ever see it. Um, which... You make it sound really nice. Mm-hmm, yeah. Uh, and th- that's Just the, is the way the world works. It's supposed to work, but it isn't really how it works at the moment. Like, I've spent most of my time on latest, uh, the latest category, which is exactly how I spend on the AC subreddit, and I spend on the new page. I have no idea how the Ubisoft forums work, because they confuse the shit on me. Um, and... There's, it's lots, there's lots of content that people haven't created, like not their own content and not giving credit, which I've seen a few times. And uh, I've seen where just people post random crap 
and like there's one post right here and it says assassins assemble assassins of the council assemble together and embrace london signed i cookie that's not fan art or a video or an article or anything that doesn't fit for the site and i report these things because that's what i've been told to do Look, this, con this content is misleading or irrelevant to Assassin's Creed Council. And I've reported quite a few posts so far for this, and that none of them have been removed yet. Like, I don't... So either, one, I don't understand what this site is for, and I'm just giving them a whole bunch of crap to check out when it's actually allowed, or two, no one's checking the moderation log. Now, the people moderating this are, are the community managers, Managers. So we have uh, Shade from the Ubisoft forums, uh, we have Joker, we have Esco, I think some others as well, um, and Gabe's on there but not directly in a moderation role, who are all um, looking at the content. Um, and so I'm a bit confused right now about what these things mean. And there's a post right here which says Assassin's Creed Rogue Remastered. I can't be the only one who would love to have Rogue on PS4. And it's like, that's, this isn't, this is you trying to start a, conv a discussion. That's not what the site is for. You can't even respond to anything other than top level comments. And you can't upvote or downvote second level comments either. So this isn't a site for discussion. You're going to get one, uh, you're not going to get a back and forth discussion going. You're going to get one response. And that's, so it's clearly made for content creation and getting feedback on your content. And you can say, Oh, thanks for that, you know? But, so the website has a little bit of an identity crisis, essentially. Yeah, no one seems to understand mm -hmm. what it's for. Like, people are posting things that, that don't fit, as far as I can tell. And so that seems no one's removing them. I saw, maybe I don't understand what it's for. Maybe I'm reading the council tour wrong. I don't understand what's going on. And then we get into the... Uh, what is the biggest issue with it? So the way this works is that um, I'm going to tie this into the subreddit, so all these subreddit uh, uh, users probably understand quite a bit well, quite a bit better. Um, every single time, oh god, this is really confusing <laughs> as a base. Um, basically, you get points through being upvoted, and uh, every year, thirty people with the most points will get to go to. Uh, Ubisoft Studios and get to go on tours and things like that. So similar to the uh, Ubisoft Star Pro Player program. Um, but mm. the issue is that that, um, that they're, not com they're not staff picked people to go. They're just whoever has the most points. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's whoever has the top post on Hot Now has the most points. And so right now, it's basically only the uh, Ubisoft employees that have the most points. They have like any kind of <laughs> Recognition, and so I think this will encourage shit posting, as um, people from 4chan and uh, Talk Sandwich would say, and it's going to encourage low quality content and uh, reposting content and posting content that's not your own, so you can get more points, so that you can then go to Ubisoft. Like every Assassin's Creed fan wants to go to Ubisoft Montreal. We were talking about this while you were the areas like. Ubisoft Montreal. I was outside. Is <laughs> close enough. Montreal's like the mecca for AC fans. Everyone wants to go there, so I don't see why 30 people wouldn't do whatever it takes, even if it means making shitty posts on here. I would shit post my heart out. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm leaving comments and things, and this is also another confusing point. Basically, there are two sets of points, and they don't ever clear this up anywhere. They have article and comment points where if you upvote it it gains one and if you downvote it it loses one and that causes then supposed to cause how it goes on hot now and there's also user points and uh, for every single post slash article point you get five user points so yesterday I had 70 points on my user page that means I've been upvoted four times. That doesn't <laughs> translate over very well, because you start out with 50 by default. 
Um, I don't know oh, yeah. how we're supposed to know that, but then if you look on your activity page, it then says the user points are XP. So I think that they should probably call the user points XP all over the site, you know? So you have the posts and comments, they're called points, and when I look at my user page, I can tell how much XP I have. I think that would just make my more sense. <gasps> Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, the probably the largest issue right now is moderation. There's, of course, the technical issues, bugs, things like that. I think that. You know what I'm worried about? What do you worry about, Em? Is if they find a way to connect this mess with Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Mm. Mm. Get yeah. 500 points to unlock this outfit. Get 700 points to unlock this thing. As far as I can tell, it isn't going that direction, but of course we don't know yet. But it yeah, looks... Ubisoft is unpredictable, you never know. Yeah, I don't know. It doesn't... It seems like it's going to stay social media, but we also thought that Initiative was going to stay exclusive to it, but... And then it turned into a stat trigger. Um, so we don't really know how that would go. Um... One of the most glaring issues, I've spent now four days on the site, and the same posts on Hot Now, on the top of the Hot Now page, so that's the front page when you first access the site, are the same from three days ago. So no one's content is actually being seen. And that's what the site is about, is getting more people to see the content you have created and getting more recognition for it. And yet, the only posts that people have seen are these from the studio posts, where Ubisoft posts exclusive content out, things like that, on the site. And I think that is the biggest issue right now, because um, there's going to be eventually be a leaderboard, which you can see mm -hmm. is coming soon on the site. And uh, and I think that at the top, I've seen some of the Ubisoft employees pages so far. And they've got at least 1,000 times as many user points than everyone else, every other user, because they're at, way at the top. Mm -hmm. So I think that there's just definitely going to be an art to getting, like on, the, on uh, the subreddits, myself and some others have learned over the years, like what time of the day you post to get the most recognition and to get the most views and get the most upvotes. And eventually, once you start getting upvotes, you're heading straight to the top. Well, here I think it's going to be very, very similar and a lot more finicky because uh, right now, not a lot of things are being seen. And like I posted my uh, AC1 review on there and I got a mm -hmm. ton of great feedback on uh, Twitter and on uh, the subreddit and a lot of people really enjoyed my review. And it was pretty good. Literally no one saw it on the site. I didn't get a single point, up or down. I didn't get a single comment. Literally no one saw it. No one's looking at the latest page, as far as I can tell. It's only me. Um, <laughs> so, I don't... Yeah, there's... It has a lot of way... It has a long way to go, this site does. In terms of technical issues and the whole way that posts filter around needs to be changed dramatically um, and actually yeah this the way this points thing is very similar to because when you get more points you get more ranks uh, right now I have 125 user points and I am an apprentice rank this is very very similar to how the Assassin's Creed server worked once upon a time where mm -hmm. the more comment karma you had uh, the more the higher your rank was and a lot of people I remember those days that. It was one yeah. of the days. Master Assassin. Like yes. last year. <laughs> um, but yes. Summer of last year. So yeah, a year ago now. Which is like mm -hmm. 20 years in internet time. <laughs> so, but there was a difference there. Because that was only comment karma. Because there were no link posts. And so you couldn't... And usually, generally, if you want to have an upvoted comment on Reddit, you're going to need to be a bit, at least witty. Or have an informed comment or completely destroy a decade, but on here, because points are so heavily emphasized on posts, 
as opposed to comments. And because it's much easier to shit post posts, I think that this site is going to lend itself to shit posting quite a bit more than the Assassin's Creed subreddit will. Um, Aries, what are you thinking now? I've, I've, I've told, I believe I've covered everything. Oh wait, shit, no I haven't. There's more to talk about. <laughs> Go on. Um, there's Jealous. these things called badges, which are like achievements. Oh yeah. Um, and one of the most confusing things to me is these badges where you, you get uh, badges for not, literally doing nothing. Which are a little confusing for me, because they're rewarding you not doing anything. There's like the Lurker badge, or like the Silent Assassin badge, and it's like the Try Harder badges, is what they're called. And Which is cute, but kind of useless. Yeah, it's like, I can't get all of these badges because mm -hmm. of that, you know? Either I have to do it very, very deliberately, make a new account, not make any posts or comments for the first few days, get that badge, and then do everything else. I don't... I don't understand. <laughs> and all of the badges have this very flashy text and description, mm -hmm. but many of them don't actually explain how to get them. They all have, like, oh, you're a master assassin now, you did a good job, and it's like, how the fuck do I get this fucking badge, man? <laughs> That's you how Ezio became a master assassin. He did a good job. Yeah, it's like, what? And there's badges for, like, having your, uh, the post you reported be flagged as inappropriate and removed. And it's like, well, what's inappropriate on the site? There's no rules anywhere, which is something I talked to Gabe about, and he's, um, he's working on that. I'm um, sending it through the Paris office. But, uh, there are, I'm getting all flustered. So do you want to know what I think? Aries. Eris, tell okay. Me, tell me what you think. Um, that was, wow, a lot of stuff, and you definitely went more into this site than I did. I was on there for like about 10 minutes mm -hmm. and watched Wayne Davies' video, and I was like, hmm, neat. Mm -hmm. uh, so those are very valid concerns, and I think they're all concerns that can be dealt with yes. for the most part. Yes, I agree. Because, you know, just send it over to the Paris office, and if they care to fix you know, your, your profile, um, I think most of these could be dealt with. And like I said, it's a new website. I I never said that I like loved it. I just said that I want to like it. Um, I agree. I actually so, really like yeah. it as a site, and I've been using it for the last four days. And if I didn't <laughs> like it, I would have stopped on the first day. Um, it's just that if I'm going to continue liking it, these are just some issues that I've seen, basically, and I think that these are going to get in the way yeah. and probably going to make me stop. If they aren't addressed in the first month, then I will stop using it because these are pretty glaring issues. Not right yeah. now, but um, I'd like to see how they dealt with this. Yeah, I definitely think um, that, you know, there's two ways I could see them um, supporting the site as time goes on. One would be, you know, like you support a site. You continually update it and you moderate it. You're constantly looking at it and trying to figure out what works, what doesn't. Um, or they could treat it like a game, which you put out there and, you know, nowadays you might patch it a couple times, but then you'll just let it go. And if they do that, I don't think it's going to survive. Um, because mm. I don't yeah. think they're going to put the carrot into a couple patches that um, constant um, improvement and moderation would provide. Yeah. Like, and if you're being worked um, on... In, in Montreal, and I definitely mm -hmm. trust Montreal a lot more than I trust Paris to work on this. Mm -hmm. For instance, um, you may not have noticed, uh, you listeners, but um, for a while there I dropped out of the Skype call. The reason was because I went to the website, the Assassin Council website, <laughs> And it slowed my computer to a crawl and crashed my browser and Skype. Oh, my God. Yeah, a lot of people are having loading issues. I know, M, you're having loading issues with the site. Um, mm -hmm. Fred, a subreddit user uh, and mod, uh, a good friend of mine, I asked him to check it out and, uh, because I think that keeping up to date with the general Assassin's Creed community would be is very important for a mod, and so I asked him to check it out and uh, get back to me. And um, it, it, it loaded for 10 minutes, and then he gave up. 
because he wasn't going to sit there forever while it loaded, which I think mm-hmm. is completely fair. And, yeah. Uh, until some of these issues are these, like yeah, I think we could probably create like a priority list about these things, and like the loading issue is probably one of the first you want to deal with. And um, Gabe said that that's actually not specific to AC Council. Yeah. Yeah. And that all of the Ubisoft sites running on these servers are having these issues. Mm-hmm. Which, if is, anything, which is its own problem. Yeah. Yeah, that makes me worry more than just like if it was restricted to the council site. Hmm. If. Yeah. We've talked about it. I think we've talked about the AC Council enough for now. Um, if I hadn't talked to Gabe for that wee while, I would have had a lot more to say. I think I would have had a lot more concerns. Um, How much did he pay you? <laughs> How much did he pay all of us? He paid me in compliments. Um, and cookies, those cookies from earlier oh, we were talking those, about. Yep, those cookies. Uh, I, yeah, I talked to him quite a bit, and he cleared up a lot of my concerns for me uh, because the site... I'd say the site isn't very clear in many ways. Um... In what it is and what it does like it tries to be and then like i told him that the council tour is a bit vague and he uh he disagreed with me and i explained that it's because the council tour states that this is for content creation so if you make a drawing of deviant art if you make a youtube video you can then cross post it to here but that's barely what any of these posts are I saw people posting syndicate trailers. I saw someone posted a rogue trailer. I don't understand what's going on right now. And it was upvoted. I don't understand. I said, actually, in one post... Oh, God, this brings me to another point, actually. Should we just, like... No. Let, do you want to keep ranting, or should we move on to the next thing? <laughs> um, I have just a little bit left, so... Uh, all right. Um, you sound so disappointed. Let it all out, man. You can't edit or delete your own posts, uh, which, yes. which is an issue. I saw someone who uh, forgot to include the image in his post, and so he just posted again. And so I was like, wait, man, what's, what's up with this post? And he was just like, oh, sorry, I can't, I can't delete posts. And I was like, what? what? Why can't you delete your own post? That seems strange to me. Okay. I think that's all I have to say about the site. Um, Aries, Connor, final thoughts. Um, I know you're having lagging issue, uh, loading issues, so you don't have any thoughts. Uh, Aries, Connor, what do you think? What do you think? Tell me. Give it to I've me. said my thoughts. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've mostly said what I've been saying. I'll just like reiterate, you know, that there's a right way for this site to evolve, and there's a wrong way. And um, I don't know. We'll see which way it goes. Yeah. It's just whether they are going to put in the time and efforts. The Paris office yeah. is going to put in the time which, and effort to fix this shit. I know that, which is why that um, the the site wide loading issue actually worries me more because I feel like it's been around for a while, mm. Um, mm. and it kind of worries me that they can't make their whole website work. Yeah, whether uh, this is going to work as a piece of that. Yeah, it's yeah. If Montreal was in charge of it, I'd probably be feeling quite a bit better. But I know that Montreal is working closely with Paris. Um, next topic is something very, very special, and I am looking forward to you all to hear it. So let us switch over. That. I am here today with the writers of Assassin's Creed Legacies, Ares and LWS Rocks, aka Lawson. Say hello, guys. Hello. Hello. Now, wait a second, guys. What's Assassin's Creed Legacies? Well, well uh, glad you asked. Like you don't know. <laughs> um, Assassin's Creed Legacies is a project that actually, Lawson, you you came up with it, so you 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 speak. Uh, Yeah, I kind of just had this idea. A lot of people talk about how much they'd like to see Connor, Shay, and Arno come together in a climactic battle. And I don't know. I noticed that Ares and I were both often posting about story-related stuff. I figured it'd be a neat thing to collaborate on. So we wrote uh, 
a story about exactly that. It's Shay, Connor, and Arno coming together. We hesitate to call it fan fiction, but I, I suppose it, for all intents and purposes, that's what it is. So this is your fan story all about focusing around and uh, somewhat ending the stories and putting a cap on the stories of Shay, Arno, and Connor. Um, so wh why did you guys decide to write this? I know you touched on it a little bit just then, but is it just because they don't have ends to their stories? Well, what happened was after, I can't remember which episode it was, I think it was 19, uh, when we were talking about the newly released um, AC Syndicate menu theme, and that night after McCrackenway said, hey, you know, this is thing from Dido's Lament, I spent about half an hour writing this huge long thing saying here's what Dido's Lament means in terms of the Aeneid and what it could relate to in terms of AC Syndicate, and then I went to sleep, and the next morning I got a message from Lawson like, hey, you wrote that thing on the page, and I remembered you're like a decent writer. I also like writing things. I have this idea. And then we spent, you know, like four hours that day just kind of storyboarding and putting plot points together. And then we wrote basically like three hours every day for a week, and then by the end of the week it was done. Yeah. I mean, I decided to write it because it just seemed like a fun exercise to try and take all of these established settings and characters and try and do them in a way that feels legitimate and isn't just complete, completely inaccurate. And, um, yeah, I, I really just noticed that a lot of times when Aries and I would post things, we'd get the same comments that would say, you should be a writer for Ubisoft. <laughs> I'd noticed those on my post, and when I saw them on his post, I was like, I think, I think we could work together on this. <laughs> Yeah, so we basically, you know, we've talked about this on the podcast, but with the way Connor's story has been handled, we get the distinct impression that Ubisoft isn't exactly keen to put an official cap on it. So Lawson, when he sent me the message, figured, hey, you know, they're never going to finish this. Let's take it into our hands. Let's be the ones who write the story that everyone says, oh, I think this is going to be how it happens. In my mind, this is what actually happened in the story. So we wanted to be the people to do that. All right, so you guys have been working on this for the last wee while, and we'll get a little bit more into that in a second. But yeah. when can someone like me read this work that you guys have created? <laughs> Today. Oh, surprise! The first part of it. It'll be a five-part story. And part one will be up to the parts are roughly equal length, so uh, you can read part one, which is called Crossroads. Uh, um, many different places. We'll get to that later. And uh, where can I find this? Uh, everywhere, essentially. It's, it basically, we've put it in a PDF form, and we'll ha put links on Twitter, uh, the UB forums, Reddit, um, anywhere, uh, probably in the description, hopefully. Uh, yeah. Cough, cough. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, but uh, anywhere you can think to find Assassin's Creed things, we will put a link to it there somewhere. Uh, so this has been released in five parts or, uh, or like five chapters. Do you guys have sequences. a... Uh, five sequences, even? Yeah, good uh, call. <laughs> do you guys have a favorite? Uh, part five. Part yep. five. Part five. Oh my god. We actually we wrote the first line of dialogue we wrote was a very climactic discussion. Uh, yes, climactic discussion. We have a lot of those in part five. And it was about maybe like an hour into figuring out the plot. We were thinking, what is this conversation gonna be like? And I just wrote a paragraph, a speech that Connor gives. And Lawson was like, Okay, yep, yeah, if this is the theme, the tone that we're going for, we're we're gonna be in good shape. So then we're like, Okay, awesome. Then we wrote it, you know, front to back, the way you'd normally write things. Right. But the first line was actually from the end scene. Now Arno, Shay and Connor are all very, very different characters. They all speak very differently. Um, I think we discussed that a little bit before and most people, most of our listeners will understand the differences and uh, different nuances between these characters. Was it, was it difficult writing uh, dialogue and writing uh, different motivations behind these three very, very different characters? It was. We essentially had to really go through every line of dialogue in a fine tooth comb and example, e examine every language choice and word usage and we just had to keep asking. Is this something Connor would say? Is this yeah. something Shay would say? And we'd like read it over in their voices. We probably think. asked that at least you know twice for every line. Is is this really how they would speak? And eventually yeah. we found certain patterns. So for instance, Connor never contracts. He would always say, I am or I will or I must. He doesn't contract anything, whereas Shay does contract a lot of things. And Arno uses big fancy words because he's that kind yeah. of person. So we after a while we sort of found patterns that work. But we still had to go back sometimes and say, like, ah, he'd say this, he wouldn't say that. So sometimes we'd have a line and we'd say what we want exposition-wise. 
and then we'd go back and Connorify it or Shayify it or Arnoify it. So but think- that's not to say that we haven't taken a few liberties, like, but the only one that I can think of that's important is, you know, Arno, when you meet him in the beginning of Assassin's Creed Unity, he's full of sarcastic quips and, uh, and fun little lines. And even though by the time this story happens, that part of his character has disappeared for seemingly no reason, we wanted to include that because it feels not necessarily authentic to who Arno is, but who everyone wants him to be. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so we, we chose to go for the preferred depiction of Arno. Yeah. Um, so it would be safe to say that you guys did a bit of analysis with these three characters. You looked into how they speak and things like that. Um, was writing this and analyzing their characters and their motivations and basically putting them all into this big story, did it change your perception of these characters to change how you look at them? Oh my god, yeah, unbelievably so. In what way? Well, I think basically part of it involves the physical plot elements of what happens. So there are certain things that obviously I won't spoil because you have to read them yourselves. Okay. But certain, uh, the ways that stories, story arcs begin, evolve, and end, knowing how certain characters end up, it's like, wow, that really changes what I would have thought of this character, even though we kind of self-inserted it. Um, the way we drag out arcs, it kind of emphasizes certain parts in the older games uh, and changes how we look back on things, knowing what we know now in the context of our story. So kind of like looking forward to see it backwards, I guess. Lawson, how has it changed you, for you? I, basically the same way it has for you. Um, you. You read my mind, basically. And that's also part of what the writing process was like, is one of us would be writing and the other person would be about two steps behind uh, editing everything and changing words and fixing things. So we were pretty much on the same wavelength the entire project, which was great. Mm-hmm. Now, guys, this is the wish, and I think everyone wants to know. Can we expect a sequel? A sequel? Um, I think the way you wrote it, there won't be a sequel. Not of this story, at least. Yeah, we could easily we could easily do other stories in the AC. Oh, universe. Yeah. One thing, because um, uh, it's a, it's very cool that you guys did this, and um, there's a couple other secret projects going around, but I won't talk about them. But th- that kind of made me think, like, you know, it would be cool to do something like that. So um, I actually have some ideas that direction. Whether I actually get to them remains to be seen, but I'd appreciate. Uh, some collaboration if you want, I guess. Absolutely. But Aftermath, to your question, um, when you read the end of the story, you will see that there, in terms of a direct sequel to AC Legacies, there will be no yeah. direct sequel. <laughs> <laughs> so not, not what you're saying you, is that yeah. while there won't be a sequel, we may get other fan stories from you guys, and maybe that will be uh, sort of dependent on the reception of this one. Sort of like how so you So if it's shit, we'll probably making. stop. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think um, anything could happen. I think it's totally possible that we could collaborate on another Assassin's Creed story if this works well. And there are a couple of little, I, I don't want to say Easter eggs or hints, but like there are things, elements that are present in this story that could potentially be elaborated on in a future, not necessarily sequel, but one could say spiritual successor. We've opened up some doors, but also part yeah. of the reason we wrote this is because we felt the story needed to be written. Like there's a, there's a huge you know keystone to an arc of stories that is entirely missing from the AC series, and we wanted to just put that in there, just slip it in, and uh, give a lot of stories the closure they needed. So um, if we find another story that needs to be written, we will write it. Now I know a little bit about uh, the answer to this is because I talked to you guys a bit, but did you have to do a lot of um, a lot of research? While writing this, did you have to look into? Did you have to go back through the games to look into the characters? Did you have to spend a lot of time on the AC wiki? Yes. Yes, the wiki we, was a lifesaver. The wiki we used a ton. In fact, part of the reason I have my PS4 in my room right now is so I could be in Unity, uh, in Paris, seeing what everything looks like while also on Skype, so we can describe it. And so all of the locations that you see and read in Legacies are going to be very much true to how they are in the game. Um, and I even went back and played some AC3 to help like nail the characterization of Connor a bit more. Uh, this is easily the most research that I've had to do for a fictional story. And also in terms of regular historical research too, there are a lot of things we made to make, we needed to make sure that dates worked. Um, there was a calendar of all the events in uh, AC Unity 
that was unbelievably helpful for us. But uh, one of the big things was, um, Lawson, like you said, um, getting the locations right. There's one big set piece location near the very end of the story where as we were writing it, Lawson was actually in Unity saying, okay, so here's this thing here, here's this thing over there. And we were kind of writing it to, to fit in the way it actually looks in the game, which I thought was really neat. So those of you with a good photographic memory of Unity will be very, uh, very pleased with that, I hope. Uh, so guys, what was, the, what was the writing process like for this? Because two people writing a single story could be different from what most people would imagine writing a uh, narrative story would be like. So how did that work? How did you guys actually do this? We would be on a Skype call with Google Docs open, and we would literally just write at the same time almost. Um, sometimes I'd be back editing while he'd be writing, or I'd be writing while he'd be back editing and finding. Usually depended on who was speaking. So if Connor or Arno, uh, or if Connor was speaking, I would be writing it. Uh, if or no, sorry, uh, I was mostly in charge of Shay, and we kind of split uh, Connor and uh, Lawson. You were mostly in charge of Arno's dialogue. Yes. So guys, there must have been lots of challenges while writing this because it's uh, quite the piece of work. Uh, what was the hardest part, would you say, about writing Assassin's Creed Legacies? Oof. Um, I don't know. I mean, I one of the things about writing it, sorry to, to add on to the last question, was that the way we'd write is after the first uh, day, it was a Sunday, when we put the idea together and we had our, our outline planned. Um, I'd basically, at some point when I got back from my, my classes, I'd be like, hey, Lawson, want to write? He's like, yeah. So we'd just jump on and write for however many hours. And one of us would have to leave. And then we'd come back a couple hours later. Hey, do you want to write? Yeah, let's write. <laughs> so it was almost like a drug. Uh, there was one time, I think uh, the third day in, we wrote for three hours straight. And it felt like 30 minutes. We're like, holy crap. And then we promised never to write for more th for than three hours again because it kind of our quality dipped a little bit by the end. So we had to go back and fix it the next time. But then the last day, we were writing for it must have been like four hours straight, but we were like so into it because we wanted to finish the story that it, it just it worked out well. So um, yes. it was just like whenever we could, we're like, yeah, let's, let's write some more stuff. So just uh, on that. It's interesting to me that like everyone knows that when you're reading a story or you're playing a game or you're watching a movie, if it's really done well, part of you wants to keep going because you want to know what happens at the end. And this was the case of we knew what was going to happen at the end because we were writing it. But we also just really wanted to write those those ideas that we had for the ending that it kind of just kept us going for insane amounts of time because we just wanted to get there and we wanted to put those words on the paper mm. so that it could exist. Are you guys pleased with the outcome? Do you believe you did the uh, characters? Do you believe this? Do you believe Legacies does the characters justice? Do you believe you guys did good work? Oh yeah, we wouldn't be putting out if we didn't think it did. Mm -hmm. There were several times when we were writing certain lines and certain uh, discussions, and we just kind of leaned back. We're like, "Holy shit, this is going to be good!" Uh, <laughs> and we just knew that we we hit some theme or some character right on the head. We're like, "Yep, that that that's how it should be." Uh, to reiterate from what we said in the beginning, where can everyone find legacies? Um, PDF will be linked um, on Twitter, uh, on the uh, UB forums. Uh, on the subreddit, um, any place you can find Assassin's Creed, you'll find a link to this somewhere, somehow. And this will be released, uh, how often are the parts going to be released? Um, weekly, I think. Yeah. Weekly, every other week. We don't exactly know the schedule, but you know, kind of going along with uh, the marathon to get up to AC Syndicate. We don't want to drop it all at once, but we also don't want to string you along for too long, so fairly regularly. And where can everyone find you guys, Aries? Uh, I have a Twitter, uh, Aries2596. And Lawson? I have a Twitter that is at Schmeedly, which is spelled S-C-H-M-E-A-D-L-E-Y. I'm also LWS Rocks on Reddit. Uh, those are the two places you can find me. And Aries, the same on Reddit? I am, I'm also on Reddit, yes. Aries2596. That's me. Is there anything else you guys want to mention before we uh, head off? Uh, we hope so. you enjoy it. We worked really hard, and uh, we hope you guys like reading it as much as we liked writing it. Yeah, tell us what you think. I think you guys have a lot to be proud of. Thank you. Thanks. We are now one week into the Assassin's Creed Marathon for 2015, and we have conveniently just finished up playing AC1 today. Woo! Uh, and it's been pretty interesting. It's been a lot different this year compared to how it was last year when I started the whole thing. And... Um, 
Generally, I've found that the most interesting thing about Assassin's Creed 1 when playing it in the marathon is just how divisive of a game it really is. Um, on games like AC2 or AC4, you'll find that you know, 75% of the players at least can all agree that it's a really good game. Some games a lot of people can agree are pretty bad. This one just happens to be a 50-50 split. A lot of people are talking about, some of them will say, oh wow, AC1 is really good, it's one of my all-time favorites and it's up there with the best. Other people have not had as much luck with it. And at this point in the series, we're coming off of a game like Unity, which is next generation only, has a pretty dramatic shakeup of everything in terms of the three core pillars. So going back to the very basic, stripping everything away and starting at the very beginning is an enjoyable experience for some and a miserable one for others. I found personally that I had a lot more trouble with it this time around than last time. I felt like going from Black Flag's mechanics to AC1's was a pretty non... It wasn't difficult to make that jump backwards, but going from Unity to AC1 was really difficult for me. Personally, and the other hosts can attest to this, I was really predicting that a lot of people would experience the same thing. A lot of people were going to be saying that uh, after Unity, AC1 was just painful. Uh, that really hasn't been the case. Some people have said that, but it hasn't been the widespread majority opinion yeah. that I was expecting it to be. The thing that really comes out is like, the thing that's always been is like, the investigations are a nice idea, but they're really not fun. Um, and uh, like the story, I think, is actually pretty well praised for the most part. Yes. Uh, I think AC1 has the strongest central internal mythology of the games. Oh, I absolutely. Yeah. Like modern day and in the past, because yeah. uh, the way that things are introduced to the conversations between Al Mualim and Altair with mm -hmm. like teasing out how the Templars work. Brilliant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I really loved the modern-day interludes. I was so interested in what was going to happen with Desmond and the rest of the gang that I felt compelled to continue playing the historical parts, which got pretty tedious to me in the middle. I was inspired to keep going through them because I really wanted to see what was going to happen next. Yeah, what was it, like, sequence three, maybe? Sequence four that's, like three assassinations in one yes. sequence and it's just a long haul. Oh um, yeah. And that's been frustrating for nearly everyone, especially our streamers. Treviso, oh man, it was a slog. It was a three hour stream and uh, uploading it, keeping all the all the files on his computer took up massive amounts of gigabytes because he, he 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 won't go any any lower than 1080p, 60 frames per second. Damn. If only Ubisoft could have the same attitude. <laughs> but yeah, AC1 has been a really interesting experience uh, again this year. And uh, I have to say, it's been suggested by several people, and this is something we will consider and something that will likely be decided based on a poll that will be available after the marathon is over, that with the... Not the next 12 sequences that Syndicate will add to the series, that it might actually be smart to drop Assassin's Creed 1 from the marathon next year, considering we're probably going to find that most players will step in when AC2 starts, because a lot of people don't really want to replay AC1. Yeah, that's definitely, um, I think, the case. Uh, I couldn't even finish AC1 while I was writing my review. I got about halfway through and decided that I actually remembered most of the game, and um, I think that AC1 is definitely a good game, and it's a great game actually. If you've played, if it's your first AC game, and you're playing it for the first time, it's way yes. more easy to use. And think, it's, yeah, because it goes oh, yeah. way back. It goes way bare bones, and all. It's it's mm -hmm. definitely the least like the rest of the series out of all the games. It stands it, out the it, most. If I yeah. hadn't played it before any of the other games, I would have probably hated it. If I had started with AC2 or Brotherhood, and then went back and played AC1, I would have had a mess of a time with it. I I played I AC1 like before everything else. It was about a year before yeah. AC2 came out, so AC2 wasn't even a twinkle in our eyes yet. But I, like, just going from all the crappy little linear games I played on my, you know, PS2 and whatnot, this was like a whole new world, an open world, three different cities. Like, oh my god, 
it was so unbelievable and new. And I remember Jade Raymond was saying, like, in the kingdom, if you see a mountain, you can freaking go to that mountain. I was like, oh, my God. So starting from not having played any other AC games, AC 1 was unbelievably fantastic. But going back is tough. Mm -hmm. What do you yeah. do? Uh, Don't mention the kingdom in front of me because you'll get me talking again, just like I talked about the AC Council a few minutes ago. Yeah. Uh, a few minutes ago? You mean like three hours ago? <laughs> oh, fuck you, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> There's a there's a couple of interesting things in the kingdom I think personally, uh, but uh, but but let's let's skip the kingdom for now. Yeah, I'm actually going on to um, I don't know. Like I kind of like I kind of like there was a part of the marathon just because like it gave me a reason and like a manageable way to play through AC one because you're right. Like I don't have the motivation to replay it anymore by myself. But it was nice to like be playing it with a community and like get through it that way, because like, okay, I'm going to play this much today, and then I'm just going to play whatever else if I want to play anything else. Um, it was kind of nice to have that community run through. Um, I, I personally have not, and I know this sucks because I'm the marathon like administrator, director, whatever, I've not been playing AC1 along with the rest of the community because I had to play it when I was writing the daily threads that you guys see every day. That's fair enough. And, and I love the game. I, I enjoy it. But... But twice in a year, I think, is too much AC1 for yeah. me. And I think yeah. you can all empathize with and understand that. Yeah. I'm excited to be jumping in tomorrow with AC2. Uh, I'll be posting comments every day with everyone else, and it'll be great fun, I'm sure. I really enjoyed it last year. But, yeah, it's been an interesting experience to replay AC1 again with everybody in the community and having that discussion element. Um, were there any questions that the community or you guys wanted to yes, ask me? I have three questions from the community for you. Um, first off, we have actually Connor asked a question for some reason. Um, <laughs> and he wants to know, how was the process this time around? I know you had a much larger team than last year. Yes. Well, to answer that question, the size of the team came directly from the size of the idea. I knew this year, since I knew it was going to happen, and it wasn't like last year where it started the day I thought of the idea. That's not a joke. I literally said, this would be cool, and then did it, because the days happened to line up perfectly, or almost perfectly. I was two days off because my math is shit, but that doesn't matter. Um, this time around, I wanted to have a lot more pre-planning and preparation. And there were a lot of ideas for things that I wanted to be a part of the daily threads every day, like the fan art that is featured every day. I don't know how many people are looking at it. I don't know if it's something that anyone even cares about. But it's there, and we went through, and we, we picked out 81 pictures to feature every day of the marathon. And that seemed like something that would enhance it for me. Um, the mission reports were initially only implemented when I had the idea and that was when we were already playing AC4, the last game of the marathon last year. So I had a lot of things that I wanted to do this year that were going to definitely expand the size of what was going to need to be done. And I also knew that in August would be when I was relocating. So I couldn't just get up every day and write the whole thread like I was doing last year or Treviso who took over for me when I, when I was busy. Um, so I, I knew we needed to get everything done beforehand, so I kind of just said, hey, if anybody wants to help, uh, just shoot me a message and we'll put it together, and we ended up with about six people on the Skype group for the marathon team, and we've done semi-regular group calls where we've figured out, you know, who who's responsible for what, and... I have to say I'm really pleased with how everything has turned out. It's for the most part run like a very well-oiled machine. There haven't been a whole lot of hiccups. There were a couple of ideas that we wanted to do that didn't make it into the final threads because they were just going to be too much work or didn't matter enough or no one had the time. But um, I think next year we'll probably actually scale it back a bit so that there's nothing superfluous and it's just a thread of everything you want to read. Yeah, I've been working quite closely with you guys um, as a mod liaison for uh, basically helping you out with everything that the and you guys tell me what you'd need me to do as a uh, mod to make the marathon as good as it can be. And uh, I was quite when I first came on. I think I was came on about a week into the planning, and that was even then it was like three weeks before it was uh, marathon was scheduled to start. And I was a little blown away by the depth of the planning, and I uh, nearly destroyed everything. I think twice. <laughs> um, at different occasions, but uh, luckily I managed to uh, just uh, avoid 
uh, messing with things in the future because of that. But yeah, the process has been really different and really awesome, and I've enjoyed it. It's been useful experience for everyone involved. And if you word it correctly, it's the kind of thing you can put on like a resume or a college application. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. I definitely agree. Um, we have a question from Cole96, a.k.a. the guy who runs the ones we're going for. He would like to know, who was your favorite Templar to kill an AC1? I know I'm going to pick the most boring answer for this, and everyone's going to be like, really? But Robert de Saab and uh. Moalim. But, but that's because generally I think that AC1's strengths are the beginning and the end. The beginning is awesome, the end is awesome, the stuff in between, it's not so memorable um, mm -hmm. for me, personally. Yeah. So I enjoyed the al Mualim boss fight. I don't know if that counts as a Templar assassination. It kind of does, but it kind of doesn't. Uh, if I have to choose one that's strictly a Templar, it's Robert de Saab. Um, then Talking yeah. Sandwich also has a question. I bet you can guess what it's going to be. And he wants to know, how did you come up with such a dank concept? Well... The real answer to how I came up with it is that I started thinking about what I would do if I was adapting the the AC games into a movie, and I realized that they're not really movies, they're kind of seasons of a television show, with each yeah. sequence representing an episode. And it at the same time... At the same time... Comparison in the, sorry, gosh darn it. Sorry, my bad. Oh, I, was just, I was just saying that they made that comparison in the marketing for Brotherhood, I remember. Yeah. And, and so it's kind of like, I was noticing that a lot of these shows that I like were doing marathons where they'd watch and discuss an episode of the show every day leading up to the release of the new season. And I was like, that could be cool to apply to the Assassin's Creed games. And on a lark, I just Googled how many sequences are there in the whole series, and it was 65. How many days are there until Unity and Rogue come out? <clears throat> 65. So I kind of just made the post, hey, here's my idea, guys. You want to do this? Let's do it. And everyone was like, yeah. So we did it. Fair enough. Is there any final things that you want to say before we uh, head off and do the outro? Yeah, I'd just like to say that I'm really pleased with how the marathon's gone so far. I hope everyone is enjoying participating as much as we've all enjoyed creating it. And I'm definitely excited to start stepping into Ezio's shoes when we play AC2 tomorrow. I'm looking forward to playing AC2 in Italian. Mm. I did that once. I did that with AC2 in Brotherhood. I'm looking forward to playing AC2 with a keyboard and mouse for the first time. So uh, I would look forward to that. I've done it. <laughs> yeah, so people who actually play that way most of the time, uh, tell me if there's a good control scheme you like, because I have not found one. <laughs> I'm just going to plug in my DualShock 4 and hope for the best, because playing keyboard and mouse, yeah. ugh. Ouch. I'm just like, I, I have to play it on a laptop because I'm, I'm going away for the rest of August in like a week. Um, so I can't use my PlayStation anymore <laughs> for that. I also have to play on a laptop because, as we established, uh, my PlayStation is very small in the storage space. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for having me on again to talk about the marathon. Thanks, Lawson. Yep, great talking to you. Looking forward to more marathon y stuff. Yeah, tomorrow, AC2. Woo! And then after that, the world. This has been episode 22 of the Animus Island podcast. Thank you very much for joining us, Assassin M. You're welcome. It was, it was an honor to be here. I meet you guys. Uh, where can everyone find you? You can find me on Twitter at assassins underscore m, and you can find me on the Ubisoft forums, and I have a blog, and I don't remember the address, I keep forgetting, I think it's shabenm.wordpress.com. Uh, I occasionally write there about thoughts with game design and Assassin's Creed specific things and stuff like that. So, so yeah, that's where you can find me. Alright, I'll throw a uh, link to that in the description. Um, all the music used in this episode is by Shock Atlas, which you can find on SoundCloud and places like that. Mm -hmm. As usual, you can reach all of us on the Assassin's Creed subreddit, which is assassinscreed.red.com or red.com slash Assassin's Creed, as well as on Twitter and through our email, msilentpodcast at gmail.com. If you want to be notified about when I'm asking for questions from the community, I'd recommend following me on Twitter. Um, I always post there when I'm asking for questions. And we're cracking away and I are cool people too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Ares posts pictures of him with Darby. 
which are uh, brilliant. Which was awesome. What you don't know is he took like a thousand pictures that he's uh, metering out over the next three years. Mm -hmm. Uh, (laughs) Got a lot of videos to post. (laughs) Next week, we will be joined by Katie, a.k.a. The Cliffhangers. If you'd like to be a guest or like to ask us a question to answer on the show, then you can contact us in any of the ways that you're listening earlier or in the description. I will see you.